Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. I'm a neuro anesthesiologist and I give anesthesia for all the brain surgeries. And today I would like to react to a video uh, from the season Chicago Meds where a neurosurgeon is performing a awake craniotomy in a patient. So that is like the patient will be knowing what, what is happening during the surgery. It is done for a purpose which I'll tell you in the end of the video. So I also give something called as a reality score. You all know that at the end of the video and also I will tell you some latest technologies which have come up in the neurosurgical uh, practice which are drastically going to change the practice of neurosurgery in the end of the video. Please, please, I can't stand it. Okay, Dale, you need to tell me. How are your feet? Can you feel your feet? I can't, I can't. Dan. Dale, I'm touching your right foot. Can you feel me touching your right foot? Yeah, I can feel it. Can we please stop? Okay, great. Now, how about your knee? I'm squeezing your right kneecap. Can you feel that? Yeah, I can feel it. So, so your feet, your stomach, your legs, your hands are all okay, right? Okay. Yeah, you're doing really, really well. I mean, you're answering my questions. So here what is happening is the patient uh, has become very anxious during the awake craniotomy which is not supposed to happen. But it's not totally under the neuroanesthesiologist or neurosurgeon's control. Uh, so what happens is there are some prerequisites that we need to fill before taking up a patient for awake craniotomy. The patient should be mentally strong. So, and also he should understand what kind of uh, surgery is undergoing. So, to, so, to uh, be on the safer side, we also get a psychologist's uh, opinion before the surgery to understand whether this particular patient can stand the stress of awake craniotomy or not. So, despite of that, sometimes we will be stuck in this kind of situations where the patient gets very anxious. And if the psychologist gives us uh, info like this patient is not fit for awake craniotomy, then we will resort to other techniques the other techniques where we integrate technology and we will try to achieve the same results that we are trying to get with awake craniotomy which I'll explain in the end of the video. Maybe you can answer some of Dr. Abrams questions too. What comes after three? After three? After three? You know this one. Four? You're so much stronger than you think you are. You know that? What did FDR say? FDR? Come on, we talk about this all the time. Roosevelt. You have nothing to fear. But fear itself. That's right. Raise your right index finger. If you observe the video carefully, there are few things that the neurosurgeon and neuroanesthesiologist is trying to assess. The number one is the neurosurgeon asked him what is the number which is coming after three. So that is done to assess the speech and memory. So I am assuming that this particular surgery is happening on the left side and also at the temporoparietal area. And uh, that is where your Wernicke's area is located. It is not so simple. There are so many tracks which go on there, which connect different areas of speech. And, uh, and when a surgery is happening in that specific location, you need to talk and also you need to have some kind of a comprehension that is like if i ask you what uh, to if i tell you to number one to ten you should be able to do that if i ask you what is your name you should be able to tell that so that kind of a comprehension is also required when you're doing near the one case area and the second thing that uh, the need anesthesiologist try to assess here is the memory I think they would have had a prior discussion about result and FDR or something is trying to say. Since I didn't watch the whole season, I don't know what context it is. So he is trying to revoke his memory and try to see whether his memory is intact. So, so because during the surgery, there are some areas where uh, when you are operating, there is a possibility that you can lose your memory and which is not supposed to happen. That is what they are trying to see. Number three and the most important thing according to me is the motor power. That is the power to move your hands and limbs. That is what the neurosurgeon asked. He asked the patient to lift the finger, which he did. That means his power is not affected. So it's very, uh, very simple or complex, whatever you think. This is what we do. I have done so many cases. And, uh, and uh, awake craniotomy is mandatory if it's a speech that you are testing. But if you are testing motor, it is not 100% uh, mandatory uh, because I feel if the patient is anxious and uh, there are some contraindications where you cannot do the awake craniotomy and rather than getting stuck uh, like this during the surgery with the anxious patient I feel it's better to go on to general anesthesia 
uh, you can use some technologies like uh, motor mapping and subcortical mapping the motor mapping is like we stimulate the motor area of the brain and try to get the uh, cmap responses from individual muscles and we can map the area of brain which is responsible for the function of your hands and limbs and also the subcortical tracts the corticospinal tract will be going on in the brain which actually transfers the information of the motor subcortical when the tumor is located near the subcortical area we do something called as a subcortical mapping which is a very advanced neuro monitoring technique if you do that you can get the same result of awake craniotomy with general anesthesia but there is a problem there are I'll just try to explain you in a simple way the two types of uh, brain tumors one located exactly on the motor cortex and subcortical tracts one little far away which we can identify by doing diffusion tensor imaging and functional MRI if the tumors are slightly away a millimeter or a centimeter away you can try to get away with the general anesthesia and motor and subcortical mapping but if the tumor is bang on the motor cortex then i would suggest to go for a wake craniotomy but patient should be co cooperative he should not be having anxiety psychiatric disorders or anything else claustrophobia if he has that you are left with no other option you have to go with general anesthesia and the the monitoring techniques of mapping and subcortical mapping i hope you understood this is more of a neurosurgical uh, discussion but uh, i think i told in a very simple way so that everyone can understand and uh, that's it for today uh, the reality score until now the reality in this video is near to 7 to 8 because the story writer or script writer or some whoever has taken care of most of the aspects so the so one to two also i'm removing from the reality because uh, patient getting very anxious and uh, that kind of a drama which is created there usually doesn't happen inside the operating room it will be pretty straightforward there so that is a non-reality but uh, i felt that this season is pretty real i will start following this season now i'm starting to liking this and more reaction videos i'll do in this season from chicago meds in future thank you very much for following